How many of you have goals that you set for yourself that you would like to achieve? Show him. I know you all do. That's why you all are here tonight, right? But let me ask you this. How many of you, if you had your lives to do over again, you would achieve more than what you've done thus far? Show him. Look around. Okay? Now that proves a point. What that proves is that everything that you all have achieved up to this point is just the tip of the iceberg of what's possible for you. All right? So what I want everybody to do tonight while we're going through this, you know, I want you to think about some goals that you would like to achieve. And yes, this is not for me, okay? I want everyone to start off with that. I'm a, I'm a straight shooter speaker. When we come in and do that, you know, myself, I've been through a lot of different things up until I got to this point. I'm 33 years old, all right? And I'm sure a lot of you have too. And these goals that you have to set for yourself, they're not for anybody else in this room. So if you're unable to focus on and come up with goals for yourself, how can you ever plan on achieving it? All right? So the goals I want you to set, I want you to set a personal goal. I want you to set some career goal. And then I want you to set some, uh, a goal that you'd like to achieve, making some social contribution, kind of like you're doing right now. All right? I think it was Horace Mann who said, it will be a shame to die without making some type of contribution to humankind. All right? Now, I want you to set these goals. I want you to dramatically increase them. All right? The problem with most people are why they fail in life and go through so many issues and hardship is not because they set high goals and they miss them. No. The reason why so many people fail in life is because they set low goals and they hit them every single time. And some people don't aim at all. So I want you to dramatically increase those goals. And whatever the goals are, I do not want you to focus on the how, okay? The how is none of your business. <laughs> now once you set those goals, you have to commit yourself to achieve them. I can remember years back and uh, I wanted to be a motivational speaker. And I would go to all of these seminars and workshops and I would see Guys like Les Brown and Tony Robbins and some of these other speakers listen to Jack Canfield. And as soon as I would hit the parking lot, you know, I was saying, Brian, you know, I can do that. I can do that. I can do this. But then before I even get to my car door, I start saying, how? 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 You flunked out of college. You know, you have no formal education, no real training as a speaker. How are you going to do it? How are you going to do it? Now I ran into a guy, I met a gentleman. I was lucky enough. And when I got down here, let me tell you a story how I even got here. You know, I was in, I was a college basketball player. Played in high school, played in college, received scholarship. And I did the one thing that my parents asked me not to do. They said, boy, don't go away to school and get some girl pregnant and bring home some stray babies. <laughs> and I'd be doggone if I did my best to break, go extreme, exactly opposite of what they told me to do. They sitting in the back right now. <laughs> so... I got thrust into life. I could have went back to school, completed my senior year, but I made my bed, so I chose to land. Best decision I've ever made in my life. But I went through some hardships. My family went through some hardships. I was forced to take some of those dead-end jobs. Y'all know what I'm talking about, them $7 an hour telemarketing jobs that a 21, 20 token you know, kid can only get. Selling perfumes, water treatment systems, and hi, whatever it was, if they got it to sell, I'm going to try to sell it. But I bumbled around, and I was fortunate enough to end up at a company with a gentleman by the name of Jim Hammond. Okay, and Jim was a young guy. I was about, I'm 33 today, I was about 24, 25 then. Jim drove a 745 Black Beamer and ran a very successful company I was working for. And I said, Jim, what do I have to do to get what you got, man? What, what does it take for me to get that? And what Jim did is he reached in his desk drawer and he pulled out a copy of Think and Grow Rich by Napoleon Hill. Okay? Now, me being a kid from Detroit, got a chip on my shoulder, kind of think I know everything. I said, Think and Grow Rich? This gonna help me? Man, I've been thinking about being rich my whole life. <laughs> but, you know, he gave me the book, and I said, you know, I started doing some research, and every successful man and woman I would look at online, I would read their documentary, look at their documentary, read their biography, they all referenced this book. So I said, if reading this is going to get me that, I'm all for it. So I read it. And the first time I read it, it went right over my head. Didn't understand any of it. But I said, 
It's something to this thing, so let me do it again. Read it again. Read it a third time. By then, I had my highlighter out. Okay? Now, the fifth time I read it, I had highlighted it so much that you would have thought the pages were naturally yellow. <laughs> right? But something, something started happening. And I began to develop a hunger. And let me explain to you all, you know, I am what you, in high school and college, I never read one book. And I'm not ashamed to say it. I was your typical high school and college athlete that just knew I was going to the NBA. <laughs> so why do I need to read these books? A library. You know, that was the only place you go for study hall and you asked me to go pick up some girls on campus. <laughs> you know, so I never read a book. I was what you call the Cliff Notes King. Any of y'all familiar with Cliff Notes are? You know, that's where they give you the story and you go get the thin little book and they give you the juicy book. <laughs> that was me. That was me. So I never read a book, but when I read that, I began to really develop a hunger and I began to watch, read Jack Canfield, Chicken Soup for the Soul, Les Brown, Tony Robbins. And a strange thing started happening. I couldn't notice it in myself because, you know, it's hard to see yourself in the picture when you're in the frame. But other people around me began to say, man, B, you're my buddies. That's when you know, you know when your friends, when they start noticing something different about you, you're doing it. Because them, the, them the first people to point out, I don't know who you think you are. <laughs> you know? But they start saying, man, B, what's going on, man? You seem a lot happier. You know, life is going better for you. You're stable at your position, at your job. You're moving up. Something what's going on. You know, those books and things that I began to read, they became a part of me. They became a part of me. So, everybody, I highly recommend that you find some mentor or a coach in your life. Somebody that's doing what it is that you want to do. You have to. Make sure that they have your, 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 best, your, your best for you at, at heart. Make sure that they're after your great good. But find a mentor. Everybody repeat that to me. You need? You need. I say, come on now. Just tell me, we in here. You guys are in school. You guys need this. You need? You need. Some coaching. Some coaching. Right. Right. No, no. <laughs> but make sure that you find a mentor or somebody that's doing what it is that you do. I'm sure you all have great resources around this school of successful students that have come through the program that you're in, teachers and advisors that have came to the same program that you're in right now. People that are working in positions that you came here to get. Whether you know them or not, this is your future we're talking about. And if you can't get excited and get fearless about your future, how can anybody else? You see, that's the thing right now that's going on in this society. Yeah, the unemployment is high. Over 14 million. Okay? 14 million. But look at everybody in this room. You guys could have been, and ladies, could have been anywhere in the world. But you're here with me in this school tonight. So you all have something special. Each and every one of you truly has greatness in you, or else you wouldn't even be here. You know, one thing I noticed that it's always easy. If it's a, a major person, Lil Wayne coming in town, or Jill Scott or something, man, I could, it's easy for me to find some people to roll out with. My wife and I want to go down to the landing and have a drink or something, and man, I can, it's easy. We can load people up in our trucks and ride down. But tell somebody that you want to take them to a seminar, or tell somebody you want to take them to something that's going to improve their quality of life. Uh, what you doing tonight? I mean, nothing, man. What you got going on? What's up? What's up? Hey, I'm going to this seminar. Uh, man, you know I would go, but I just remembered that I had something I needed to do. You know? That's what they do. That's what they do. You know, this stuff, this stuff that you all are doing right now, this is something that nobody and nothing can ever take away from you, ever. No weapon of mass destruction can ever rob you of your knowledge, ever. So take pride in the fact that you all are sitting here right now. There's a ton of people. You know how these people are. A lot of people have, you got to watch the toxic people in your life. Okay, let me point that out. The negative ones. Y'all know who they are? The people say, man, you know what? I think I'm going to go back to school. What you going to do that for? You know, get no job out there. No jobs. <laughs> just want to take your money. You know? Man, I, I, know, I think I'm going to go for that position in that company. What you going to do that for? <laughs> they be profiling. They don't hire nobody like you. <laughs> you, know? <laughs> you, know? you know what, man? I think I want to start reading these books and, and I think I'm going to start studying on how to develop myself. What you going to do that for? It's going to do you no good. You know, still going to be the same, trying to be brand new. Those toxic people, 
Now, how many of y'all are familiar with Dave Chappelle? Woo! <laughs> <laughs> and I bring this up, and I do this every minute. They have a skit about the player haters, okay? And, and there's these guys that all they do is sit around and hate on other people. That's it. They're not doing anything themselves, but they're hating on other people. Beware of the toxic people in your life. Negativity is draining. It's draining. It'll have you second-guessing yourself. Now, my mom always told me, never listen to somebody telling you you can't do something, especially if they never done it. You want to know the hardest thing that I've ever done in my life? You know, I make hundreds of thousands of dollars every year. I travel around, you know, raise my children, live in a nice home over there off Greenland Road in Mandarin. I'm not saying that to brag at all. But the hardest thing that I've ever done is what I'm doing right here tonight with you, believing that I could do what I'm now doing. You see, I was the guy out wilding out, cussing, going crazy, doing everything. And when I said I wanted to be a motivational speaker, oh my God. Everybody, man, you can't. Who won't listen to you? I ain't going to get up there and tell somebody how to be successful. You ain't even successful. <laughs> I ain't going to tell somebody to make some money and you ain't got no money. <laughs> Really? But you got to think about it like this. How can the world ever believe you to be something if you don't believe it yourself first? Think about entertainers and actors. You ever seen those movies? When they're little kids, the home movies, and they're playing around, and they got the, the guitar strumming, and they're three and four, you know? But they knew then. They seen it before I even know I had to tell them that. And I had a lot of people tell me that what I'm doing now would never happen. But what I had to do, I had to change my circle. I had to change my group. And I tell you right now, I'm on a board. I'm a member of a board for a company in Jacksonville, right? And the head of the board, chairman of the board, when he came in, he said, as soon as I know as much of everybody, as everybody in here, you're all fired. Uh -huh. Okay? Everybody in that group, make sure they keep learning, make sure they keep getting that money. But if you are the smartest and most positive person in your group, you need to get a new group. <laughs> Comparing yourself to people that are less than you, that's not doing any good for you to make yourself feel better. So remove yourself of those toxic people. And sometimes they can be that husband, they can be that wife, they can be that boyfriend, that girlfriend, that best friend. Now, you know, nobody run home and be like, you know what, husband, you got to go. <laughs> <laughs> you got to go. <laughs> you know, none of that. <laughs> you know, but... But you got to be cautious of what you allow into your mental Rolodex. You have to guard that with everything you got because that's all you got. Think about that. Nobody can take that from you. See, there's no such thing as a bad day, you know, just bad moments. <laughs> Think about that. There is no such thing as a bad day. There are things that happen in the course of a day, in a moment's time, but what we do, we drag it along with us. And many times we got those people, you know, those people in that play, this group right there to constantly remind you of, oh, you remember, man, when you did that, you got arrested, you got in trouble, you was wild out there. Yeah. Man, I'm changed now, though, man. I'm doing something different. I mean, you ain't changed. You still the same person. You're like, you going to be back. You're going to be doing that again. You got to watch those toxic people. That's what I had to do. I had to rid myself of all the toxic people. You know, negative people are some of the most sickly people you ever want to meet. They always got colds. Body always aching. Think about I'm serious. Think about it. Always hurting. <coughs> Nothing is right in their life. It's like they walk around with a gray cloud right over their head all the time. You got to watch out for those people. You got to guard yourself. And you got to get them out of your life immediately. But they've been my friend for a long time, right? You know, I can't do that. You know, I'm in high school with them. 